Hi, this is Francisco Pulgar Vidal with FI Quality. Today I would like to speak with you about an overview of the control chart. The control chart is a tool useful to eliminate odd abnormal behaviors in a process, anything that would make the process unpredictable. The control chart does this by separating process changes due to assignable causes from those changes which are due to chance or randomness. The control chart is made of the time order plot of values a central line and two limit lines on both sides of it. The limit lines define a range of natural variation of the process. These lines, known as the upper control limit and the lower control limit, are calculated from the variations in the data. This is a demonstration of how to build a control chart. In particular, we're going to be building a control chart called the individual values control chart, where you actually plot the values themselves on the control chart. There are other types of control charts that are good for plotting averages of values, but we're just going to be working with the most um, uh, versatile of all charts called the individual values or XMR chart. The diagram that we see here is divided into three zones. There is the green zone where I'm going to be entering the numbers and we will see in the next column in the green area a moving range being calculated, which is the difference between one value and the one before. There is also the yellow zone where um, the, dri the driving time is going to be copied, but also we're going to be calculating the three values that make up the control chart. And these are the average and two limits, an upper control limit labeled as UCL and a lower control limit labeled as LCL. These limits are calculated using the formulas right below, which are dependent on the average and a factor which is the moving range average. All these intermediate values are going to be calculated also at the bottom of the green zone. And then on the right we have the plotting area where we will be actually building all these lines and creating the control chart. So as I start with the first value, let's say we're going to enter a driving time of 55 minutes. And this gives us a first dot in the chart but there's not sufficient information in order to calculate any limits yet. As I enter the second value, you will see how the moving range is being calculated. The moving range is just the difference between 55 and 58, without paying any attention to the sign. That is, this is the absolute value of the difference between these two observations. If it's negative, it will be turned into positive. We're only interested in the actual dimensions. You can also see in the plotting area how all the points that we are being list, uh, that are listed and, and calculated already here are being charted. As I enter additional values, you will see how these various limits and averages are recalculated until we have a complete picture of the values that we wanted to show. This is how you build an individual values control chart. In this first example, we plot values increasing gradually. As we enter the values, the moving range shows no jumps or very small changes from one value to the next. This results in narrow control limits. In this second example, we plot values that change randomly. As we enter the values, the moving range shows jumps of random sizes from one value to the next. This results in wider control limits. Previously, the average moving range was 0.8, giving us control limits at 57.1 and 52.9. And now, the average moving range has increased to 2.8, giving us control limits at 62.4 and 47.6. In the third and last example, we plot values that become increasingly farther from one another. As we enter the values, the moving range shows larger and larger jumps from one value to the next. This results in the widest control limits. Now the average moving range has increased from 2.8 to 3.6, giving us control limits at 64.6 and 45.4.
we saw how to create control charts and how to calculate the limits based on the amount of variation in the data. Observe that if data change more abruptly, then the limits are farther apart. This behavior can be seen only in a control chart. Notice too that the histogram cannot display these changes in behavior. The three control charts discussed here would look exactly the same in histogram form. Thank you for your time.